nation's future. This is the Rusty Humphrey Show. Colonel Lee Ellis is here. He is a nationally recognized leadership and human performance expert. He's a speaker. He was a Vietnam POW for five years, along with Senator McCain. Uh, Colonel Ellis, welcome back to the Rusty Humphrey Show, sir. How are you? Good afternoon, Rusty. You're doing well. Hope you are. I am too. Although I got to be honest, I am, I'm a little down today, and, and I'm glad you're here because what I'm down about is what I think you may be an expert in. I see a just such a vacuum of leadership. There is so little leadership, and the leadership that is there is so poor in our country that I don't know how the hell we get out of this. Um, you know, I just saw a, a press conference. Well, we've been in Egypt, and and uh, John Kerry was there, and John McCain was there, and Lindsey Graham was there, and all our counterparts were there. Well, you sure as hell didn't do anything. Uh, Colonel Ellis, what am I, am I right here, or am I missing something? Well, I think we see in every sector of society a real, uh, I guess a vacuum might be a pretty good word. There are a lot of good leaders, but we see a lot being raised up that are not such good leaders. It seems that their focus is really on their own uh, political or financial ends way too much and not on the mission of the organization, whether it's the country or the uh, school system or whatever it is. They're focused on their own needs rather than those whom they serve. And I think it goes back to the whole idea of serving versus uh, using your power to get what you want. And, and that's one of the, the, the problems that we're having is is a, a good leader isn't really out there for himself. A good leader is trying to take others to better places, yes? Yes, exactly, and accomplish the mission, the mission of the organization that they're leading is uh, fundamental. And, of course, the other part of that is taking care of the people. And to do both of those well, you have to have some degree of humility in being focused on, you know, the mission itself, getting the results, but also taking care of the people and doing it in a way that represents the character and values of the organization. And in this, in some cases, we're talking about our country, and maybe in all cases. You know, it's interesting when you you mention the word humility, and, and I'm thinking about that press conference about Egypt and Obama, Kerry, McCain, and Graham. The words humility never would come up. I can't even imagine the word humility with these guys at this point. Well, you know, I think there's a real strength in humility when uh, you know that you're focused on the honorable thing, but you also know that you don't have all the answers, and I think that's another place we get into trouble we're afraid that if we look like we don't have all the answers on the end of our fingertips then people are going to laugh at us and say we're stupid which quite often the press does Mm -hmm. uh, somebody doesn't have the perfect answer on the spot but you know the breadth of many of these situations uh, uh, the breadth of of knowledge and responsibility required uh, sometimes they don't have the answer right on the spot and they need to just uh, say we're working through it and we'll get back with you once we get a little bit more information or get a little bit more knowledge around it. And especially Egypt, we don't, we can't control those people. We can no. influence them some, but we can't control them. Colonel Lee Ellis is here. He's got a book. It's called Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton. I wouldn't think that you would get a lot of lessons from Hanoi Hilton other than just survival. Uh, oh, no, we got a lot of lessons, man. That was a real leadership lab. You know, we had the art and the science going on there. You know, leaders face tough decisions. Should we try to escape? I mean, the Code of Conduct says we should try to escape. But, you know, after we'd had a couple of attempts and a couple, one guy was tortured to death and about ten more almost died after that, they decided, well, maybe we should use some judgment here and, and only try to escape if we have some outside help. Mm-hmm. But that decision required a lot of debate before it was made, a lot of input in, within the system. So... Uh, we saw all sorts of things. You know, they definitely clarified the culture. They always had to confront their doubts and fears. They had to stay positive. They had to be resilient. So there were so many good lessons, uh, building cohesive teams. Creativity was uh, incredible, the, the amount of creativity we had and the difference it made. So there were a lot of lessons there. What, 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 kind, of, what kind of creative things did you see done in the Hanoi Hilton, and how did it make a difference? Well, uh, from the simplest of things of one guy getting a piece of cardboard and making a chessboard, uh, another guy uh, made a communion set out of bread dough. So those are pretty creative. But the most important ones were the communication methods that we came up with. One guy developed a whole uh, sort of a, a 
signing language. It was similar to signing, but you had to spell out every word. That was like uh, that was an innovation to us, like the telephone was to the nation back when Alexander Graham Bell and those guys came up with that, or like hmm. uh, uh, cell phones were today. Uh, so we had all sorts of innovative ways to communicate, uh, to spread the word, both for you know, military organization re- reasons for resisting the enemy, but also for morale and support of people who were alone and we just needed to reach out. So uh, it was, we were always innovating about something. Leading with Honor is the book Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton. Colonel Lee Ellis is here. Have you done any of your homework on Guantanamo Bay? Uh, certainly um, Senator McCain is against Guantanamo Bay. I've been there a number of times. What is your thought as a former Hanoi Hilton uh, detaining. Well, I know that they, the reports I've seen were that the people there are eating better than the military guys that are guarding them. They have more that money true. spent on their food, and, and they have very good conditions. They have entertainment. Uh, they're li- living a pretty good life, to be honest with you. Uh, that bothers me. I, I think that's a little uh, extravagant. It's almost like we're trying to make up for something uh, as though we were guilty of something by holding them there. I don't think we're guilty of anything holding them there. Uh, maybe we should have had a trial and done done with them, but I don't, I don't think that would be a, a civilian trial. So, I, I guess so you don't equate the way they're being treated to what you you went through in the Hanoi Hilton? Well, there's no comparison to the way they're treated and the way we were treated. Yeah. All right, let, let me let me t- give you one anecdote that I saw, and you tell me if the, maybe maybe you had this. Okay, let me just ask okay. you. So, I was watching the detain a, a detainee being interviewed, uh-huh. and I was on I was watching via a camera, and the, the detainee comes in and they put him in his chains and stuff, and they say they say so, um, Muhammad, you want to uh, chew? You want smoke? Uh, take a chew. Okay, what do you want to eat? You want um, Pizza? You want a hamburger? What would you like? Uh, take a pizza? What would you like on it? No tell brothers? No. Uh, pepperoni? Sure, no problem. I'm guessing they offered you chew, smoke, and pepperoni pizza when you were in the Hanoi Hilton. Is that pretty accurate? Oh, no. We had six <laughs> months of thin pumpkin soup, uh, three months of cabbage soup, and three months of sewer green soup with a piece of small piece of bread or a cup of rice twice oh. a day. Yeah, okay. If, if they tried to pull that at the, at the Guantanamo Bay, uh, the, the guys would spit at them. Yeah, and a lot of times there were, we had a little protein in August, uh, which is, you know, this is August. Uh, the weevils hatched out in the flour, so there were always a lot of weevils in the bread for a couple of months. And then in the spring, the uh, little worms hatched out in the trees, and they cooked in open black pots, you know, like we did used to in this country. We used to. Uh, do some things in big black pots, you know, and uh, there were a lot of these little small white worms about a quarter of an inch long that would fall in, and I guess they got cooked a little bit, and we ate those too, you know. That was just more protein. It just sounds real tasty, real yeah. tasty. <laughs> so well, what we would you... What, we did what we had to do to survive, and, That's right. uh, you know, we came home, we've had a great life, been very blessed. Uh, unlike most Vietnam POWs, they didn't get a, a good welcome home. The POWs did, and so I'm thankful for that. And I know that uh, your dad didn't get the welcome home, and I've always thought about that. And so many like you whose fathers didn't come home. That was a tragic loss that happens in war. And there's just there's no way to, there's no way to explain it or understand it. It's just one of those things, and I, I feel mm-hmm. for you. Well, thank you, Colonel. I appreciate you acknowledging that, and I do my best to try to honor his memory. So thank yeah, you very much. No, you do. Okay, so you want people to go to, first of all, you got a website, leeellis.us, correct? And you've got all kinds of information there. Yeah, that's a speaking website. The book website is leadingwithhonor.com. I'm sorry, leadingwithhonor.com. Is, how long has the book been out? Is it a new book? Uh, it just, uh, it's been out of just about a year. Okay, it's well, I can't. Started. It's it's a long legged book. It's just getting started, really. <laughs> it's well, it wow. should. We've, uh, we've won two awards, and uh, so nice. it's been very well received. Nice. Well, I sure appreciate your service to the nation. The book sounds great. Leading with honor. Leadership lessons from the Hanoi Hilton. Colonel Lee Ellis is his name. Colonel, thank you so much for being on the Rusty Humphrey Show. Rusty, God bless. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate.